Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, too, have uh, expressed a desire for the court to be more transparent, to have rules that the public can relate to. I think we've been talking about that for quite a while. Um, I have never suggested that the Congress should take over the court's ability to regulate itself. I do not believe that is wise. And the letter that was received by the committee was not just signed by Justice Roberts, it was signed by all of the judges. All of them have the same concern, not just one. So where do we go and what are we trying to do? I think here's what you're trying to do on the Democratic side. Remember when Senator Schumer went to the court and started yelling at everybody in the court? Not everybody, just pretty much our folks. I want to tell you Gorsuch, I want to tell you Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. Awful decisions, uh, we all have been in the boat of getting an outcome in the Supreme Court we didn't like. But the majority leader of the United States Senate went before the court, literally out in front of it, and threatened two judges. And uh, Maxine Waters says, you ain't seen nothing yet. So we can talk about ethics, and that's great, but we're also going to talk about today of a concentrated effort by the left to delegitimize this court and to cherry-pick examples to make a point. Uh, the New York Times wrote an article a couple of days ago suggesting that George Mason Law School was up to an effort to take over the court by lavishing them with trips and influencing their decision-making process by sponsoring trips overseas while they were on break. The New York Times did not tell us about Justice Sotomayor travel uh, to Florence, Italy. They did not tell us about efforts uh, Justice Kennedy took a three-week multi-trip to Salzburg, Austria, San Francisco, Aspen, Colorado, paid for by the Aston Institute and the University of the Pacific. Justice Sotomayor and Justice Ginsburg traveled to Florence, Italy on the dime of the New York University. Justice Jackson was reimbursed by the University of California, Berkeley in 2016 and 2014 for traveling to the Aspen Institute. Chief Justice Roberts was reimbursed for travel to London to teach class on the history of the Supreme Court to students of the New England School of Law. So universities throughout this country have been paying for trips of judges. But if you read the New York Times, you wouldn't know that, would you? I can't say I read the New Republic, but this is a headline. The Democrats need to destroy Clarence Thomas's reputation. That's sort of what we're here about. Well, it's not going to work. Uh, this assault on Justice Thomas is well beyond ethics. It is about trying to deleg delegitimize a conservative court that was appointed through the traditional process. Your response has been to pack the court. <laughs> Virtually every member of the Democratic caucus, except maybe one or two, or for expanding the number of judges to dilute the conservative majority that exists today. So, Mr. Chairman, from our point of view, this is not going to work. You can write all the articles you want to write. You can take all the shots at the conservative justices you want to take. You can pick it before their houses, and it's not going to stop people from doing their job. This is an unseemly effort by the Democratic left to destroy the legitimacy of the Roberts court. It's put people at risk. It's put their personal safety at risk. And if you want to talk about making the court a better institution, I'll be glad to work with in that regard. If you want to talk about destroying the court, count me out. And about conflicts of interest, Justice Kagan, who's a fine person, was the dean of Harvard Law School. She's raised a half a billion dollars 
for the law school. When she was dean, that's sort of her job. After she left, she's been trying to raise money for Harvard Law School. There's a case <laughs> involving Harvard before the court. She's not going to recuse herself. And I'm not saying she should. I'm just saying there's a very selective outrage here. And from our point of view, on this side of the aisle, we're going to push back as hard as we can and tell the American people the truth about what's going on here. This is not about making the court better. This is about destroying a conservative court. It will not work.